him and his girlfriend buried the kid in the backyard. These crimes are horrific. Whatever this child's life was supposed to be, you made sure it didn't happen. I knew I was sick or evil or both. 220 dispatch, he jumped. We have fire out here. Hey, well, where is he in the water? In custody at 324. I have to imagine that at some point you got in the internet and said, how do I bury a body? I am so very sorry. I deserve whatever I get because of what I have done. Warning. This video includes sensitive and graphic information. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey y'all, it's Lady Curious with another true crime. This one is actually a cold case. Just remember that this video is for educational and documentary purposes only. I have not seen any other content creators talking about this case. I, I just felt like I felt so connected with the victim. And you'll find out why soon. This one might be a little shorter than normal. Um, I could not find any type of news coverage on this case. It was just weird. The circumstances are weird, and it's a cold case, so there was no one charged or no one interrogated. Let's go ahead and get to this story. Confessor J.R. Rodriguez was born on August 17th in 1969 in Chicago, Illinois. J.R. had two older sisters, and in 1979, the whole family... His mom and dad, his two sisters, and himself moved to Florida. J.R. was about 10 years old at the time and was enrolled in an elementary school. He graduated from Evans High School in 1989, then became an entrepreneur. He always succeeded in everything he did. He worked at the Coca-Cola Company for years. He then worked at a retail sunglass shop in the Florida Mall full-time, and then part-time he worked with different companies as a security guard. This case hits home for me because I'm from the area that this happened in. I worked at the same Florida Mall only two years after JR, so it's just right where I live, and I never even knew it. He was very happy and successful in his career. He lived alone in his own home since 2006. In his free time, loved spending time with his family, especially his parents. He was very close to them. Loved the beach. He really liked spending time on a tan. He loved shopping and going to the gym. He was very fit. He loved all kinds of music, but his favorite artist was Madonna. JR has a infectious smile and laugh. You will see that infectious smile in pictures that I'm going to include in this video. He could make anyone on their worst days smile. JR was positive about life and he was a very motivated person. The last time JR talked to his parents was on Wednesday, November 14th, 2012, for dinner. His parents talked about the last thing he said to them happily was, Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. I'll see you on Sunday. The same day, her brother was off work, and he had plans to go work out at LA Fitness on Colonial Drive after he left his parents' house. Shirley, his oldest sister, was always so close with her baby brother. His sister told police her and her brother text almost every day. When almost four days went by without anyone being able to get in contact with him, that rang a lot of alarm bells. What any sister or family member would do for someone they love, she went ahead and went over to his house to check on him on Sunday, November 18th. She stated when she got to the door, she knocked, but he didn't answer. And she thought that was weird, and she's like, well, let me check his door to see if it's unlocked. But she thought maybe not because that was odd for him to leave his door unlocked. But it was. And she walked in. And in the middle of like calling out to him, she just gasped because what she saw was the worst thing in her life 
that she just could not make sense of. She was horrified by what she saw. She saw her little brother laying on the ground, and there was blood everywhere. She said he was face down in a running position on the living room floor. He was stabbed in the neck and was not moving. The emotion she felt was devastation. She said she kept screaming, JR, get up! JR, get up! She freaked out. I don't blame her, I would be too. Finding someone that you are so close to and love so dearly like that is just horrific. Now, the police came and stated the house was in a pristine condition. No sign of a struggle or robbery. I actually got to talk to JR's sister, Shirley, and she said they did not find a weapon at all at the scene, but still police ruled it as a suicide. The police were just puzzled. They had no evidence of foul play. When the cops came in and they saw how he was and what happened, and it just was weird. There was no struggle. There was nothing. They just were like, it's a suicide. The police thought maybe a hate crime but because at the time there was suspicion of his sexual orientation, but they still didn't find any information that this had to do with anything with what happened to him. They had no leads and they were told JR had no enemies. He had no negative contacts at all. No one had a clue what had happened or who would want to do this to such a good person. When the police indicated suicide, his family could not believe that. His sister stated her brother was happy and full of life, full of love, and was close with them. There's no way that he would just take his life. There was no indication. He was successful in everything he did. His family just does not think he took his own life. It is such a mystery on what happened to him. Well, when the medical examiner did the autopsy and came back with the report, it just made the mystery even bigger. The medical examiner stated that how he was cut in the neck did not indicate suicide. Someone else did it to him. The Emmy ruled his death as a homicide. Officially, the police changed his cause of death to homicide. To this day, they still have no evidence or leads. It's just really strange. There was no evidence really at the crime scene. I'm guessing the killer took the weapon with him or her. I hate that this family still has no closure for this beautiful soul. JR was among 76 people killed in Orange County in 2012. Since then, the police only saw two of the 76 cases. JR murdered and 10 years later, they are still no closer to any answers. Case is classified a cold case to this day. I hope this does come across someone that might know something because she told me that the neighbors said they didn't hear or see anything. That doesn't sit well with me. It's just kind of weird. These are going to be my opinions, my little theories. To be honest, I'm questioning if the police did a good, thorough investigation, and so is his family. So much information that I could not find is astonishing. What robber just kills and leaves unless something spooked him and he wasn't done and didn't get to take what he needed or wanted? I feel like this is more of a, I'm going to this person's house to do this X thing to this person and that's it because there was no evidence, no nothing. That means that the killer had to take the weapon with them. And if it was a suicide, you would think that what had happened to him would have been found. You know, the, the weapon that he used, if it was. I really do feel like when he was stabbed, it had to have been in one of his major veins, you know, artery or... Because he didn't even make it to the door, you guys. It looked like from the description, I could see him trying to run. And that's why he was in that position, was he was trying to get away. But if you are stabbed in your major carotid, it only takes not even a minute, even seconds sometimes, to just drop. 
There was just no coverage of this case, nothing. And that hurt my soul, that this poor man was just overlooked. In my opinion, when JR got home, someone followed him inside and that's why the door was unlocked. I guess maybe he wanted to stop by his house and put on some workout clothes before he went to the gym. Because he never made it to the gym, y'all. That night, when JR tried to run, that is when the person stabbed him in the neck. It was a clean crime scene, except for the blood everywhere. Maybe someone targeted him. We as a society were not as open-minded on same-sex relationships back in 2012 like we are now in 2022. I've heard about cases of hate crime victims getting murdered in the street just because they loved who they loved. He did not deserve it. We are all human and how someone wants to live their life is no one else's business. I'm heartbroken that this loving man was taken too soon. JR never got to come out to his family. Maybe in this more accepting society, he probably would have. But back then, JR was a very private person. Please spread awareness about the case. I don't care if it just reaches a couple people. Maybe those couple uh, people know something. It happened in Orlando, Florida in 2012. Call the anonymous tip line. You never know who might come across this video. I may know something. And this line is totally anonymous. So if you know something or scared of someone, you don't want to say something, give this family some peace and justice. You can even get in contact with the Orange County Sheriff's Department in Florida, and you can talk to someone there. If I have any updates or any changes in any of these types of cases, I will leave it pinned in the comments. Please go share. Share this video with your friends and family. This is a cold case and it happened 10 years ago, so share it on your social media. His sister wrote to me. She just wants the person to please come forward so they can have closure. She misses him every day. And her brother was her best friend. Rest in peace, JR. My condolences to his friends and family. Alright, everybody. Love y'all so much. Until next time, stay safe. you in my sight I keep all the words you said to me I get you get you get you get you on your